Let's take a quiz on this topic. First, consensus at Adam means A. General consensus B. Reaching of contract C. Reaching of an agreement D. Meeting of minds upon the same thing in the same sense It's meeting of mind in the same about the same thing in the same sense We had already done this when we were covering the topic in the exam, they may also end this option until here, meeting of minds. Or they may also tell you, consensus added means understanding the same thing in the same sense. Here, both have been clubbed, meeting of minds upon the same thing in the same sense. So they may either give you meeting of minds or they may tell you, they may give you the option, understanding the same thing in the same sense. Next. The concept of duress under English contract law is similar to A. Undue influence B. Misrepresentation C. Coercion and D. Fraud Duress in England is coercion in India. It's coercion. X offers to sell a painting to Z which X knows is the copy of a well-known masterpiece. Z thinking that the painting is original decides to buy it at a very high price. Is this contract valid? A. Yes, the contract is. Yes, the price is not the criteria for setting aside the contract. B. No, X is guilty of fraud. C. Yes, Z has an erroneous belief as to the value of the painting. D. No, X is guilty of misrepresentation. Now, in this question, X is selling a painting to Z, which he knows that it is a copy of a well known painting, a well known masterpiece. Now, Z does not know about this fact. Z thinks that the painting is original and pays a very high price. Who do you think is at fault? Is X at fault because he is hiding the fact that the painting is a copy? Or Z is at fault? He should have a correct measure as to which painting is original and which is duplicate and what should be the price accordingly. Here, the answer is Z has an erroneous belief. He has the duty, he should be diligent enough to know which is the original and what should be the price. So, that's the answer. It is his duty. If he does not you know, be updated, if he does not be diligent or careful enough before purchasing it cannot be said that it was the duty of X to speak up. Here X remains silent but this silence does not amount to fraud here because it was not due his duty to speak up. It was Z's duty to diligently be aware as to which painting is original and which is duplicate and pay the price accordingly. In a case, though the husband was a divorcee, he did not disclose the fact of his previous marriage to his wife and in-laws. It was held that the consent was obtained by A. Mistake B. Misrepresentation C. Fraud D. Undue influence it's a clear case of fraud. It's a clear case of fraud because here A is hiding a fact. It's a concealment of fact. A should A has the duty to disclose the fact here. He should not be concealing the fact. And concealing a fact amounts to fraud. A man 
by the name of Sohan called a jeweler shop and chose a costly ring. He tendered in payment a he tendered his payment with a check which he signed in the name of Garish. Now this Garish is of a high credit. He is credit worthy person. So the Sohan took the ring and pledged it to Bolanath. And Bolanath did not have any notice of this fraud. He did not know that the ring has been obtained by fraud. Can the jeweler recover the ring from Bolanath? Now, you know, Sohan is committing a fraud here. Sohan purchased this ring under the name of Garish, who was a very wealthy person. He, he has a good credit worthiness in the market. So he wrote a check in the name of Garish. So this is a fraud. This is forgery of a check. Now he has taken the ring and placed it with Bolanath. But Bolanath does not know that the ring has been obtained by fraud. Can the jeweler recover the ring from Bolanath? A. Yes, the jeweler can recover from Bolanath. B. The jeweler can recover either from Sohan or from Bolanath. C. No, the jeweler cannot recover from Bolanath. D. Can't say. The answer is C. No, the jeweler cannot recover from Bolanath. Now, why can the jeweler here not recover from Bolanath? It's because it was jeweler's duty to check the identity of the person. Jeweler was careless in identifying the person. He should have made checks before handing over the ring to him. Since he was careless, his fault cannot be transferred to Bolana because Bolana did not know and there was there was no means that he could have discovered if the ring has been obtained by fraud or no. So now the jeweler, being his fault, cannot recover it from Bolana because Bolana has advanced money keeping the ring as pledged in good faith. So now the jeweler cannot recover it from Bolana. An agreement entered into with free consent and lawful but inadequate consideration is A. Void, B. Voidable, C. Illegal, D. Valid. The agreement is entered with free consent. The consideration is lawful but it is inadequate. The contract would be valid because adequacy of consideration is not required. What is required is the consent should be free. The consideration should be lawful. Both are there. The contract is valid. An illiterate old woman made a gift deed for practically her entire property to her nephew who managed her affairs. The gift can be set aside on the grounds of A. Mistake B. Coercion C. Fraud D. Undue influence this undue influence because it can be seen that the nephew would have you know made her to make a gift deed in his name so it would be undue influence again a relation is existing here secondly he is managing her affairs so even though undue influence is even though undue influence may not actually be present, it will always be assumed that undue influence is present and then the nephew now would be required to prove that undue influence is not present here. A fraudulently informs B that his house is free from encumbrances. Encumbrances means any kind of charges. Charges like mortgage, or pledge or hypothecation, any kind of charges. B thereupon buys the house. The house is subject to a mortgage. What are the rights of D? A. The contract is voidable at the option of B. 
B. He may avoid the contract and get his money back. C. Both. D. Either of the two. It should be both because the contract here becomes voidable because A fraudulently informs with that means he is committing a fraud so the contract becomes voidable and B gets the option to avoid the contract and get his money back so the option is both next which of the following statement is false a. A contract is not voidable if fraud or misrepresentation does not induce the other party to enter into the contract. This statement is true. B. A party cannot complain of fraudulent silence or misrepresentation if he had the means of discovering the truth with ordinary means. This is also true. If he could have discovered truth, he cannot say that he has been, you know, cheated by uh, fraudulent silence or misrepresentation. C. In case of fraud or misrepresentation, a grieved party can either resign or affirm the contract. This is also true. The aggrieved party gets two options either to resign the contract or to affirm the contract. So, this is true. So, what remains is D. Let's check if this is false. A party who affirms the contract can also change the option afterwards if he decides. Now please remember when the party gets the two options. To resign the contract or to affirm the contract, whatever option he chooses, that becomes final. He cannot change it afterwards. Okay, so this is false and this becomes the answer. The contract of Ubri My Fide means a contract A of good faith, B of goodwill. C. Guaranteed by a surety. D. Of utmost good faith. It's utmost good faith. It's a contract of utmost good faith. Which of the following statement is not correct? Which of the following statement is not correct? Now please Pay attention to the words here. The examiners try to confuse you, try to induce mistakes from you. It is given not correct. They have not said which of the statements is false. They have said which of the statements is not correct. So let's see which statement or which of the statements are not correct. First, a threat to commit suicide does not amount to coercion. Threat to commit suicide amounts to coercion. So this is not correct. 2. Undue influence involves use of physical pressure. No, undue influence involves use of mental or moral pressure. So B is also, uh, second statement is also not correct. 3. Ignorance of law is no excuse. This is correct. Ignorance of law is no excuse. Fourth, silence always amounts to fraud. Not correct. Mere silence does not amount to fraud. Only when it is the duty of the person remaining silent to speak, it becomes fraud. So here we have 1, 2 and 4 which are not correct. Do we have that option? 1, 2 and 4. So this is our option C. That's the answer. Where the presumption or pre-assumption of undue influence does not exist. Again, it's given does not exist. A. Husband and wife. B. Father and son. C. Teacher and student. D. Doctor and patient. In these three cases, it exists. 
here presumption exists and here it does not exist in this case the court will not assume that the contract has been entered on the grounds of undue influence however in these three cases the court will assume that the contract has been entered on the grounds of undue influence even though it was not entered so our answer is a that's the answer next silence does not amount to fraud unless silence is a reasonable b unreasonable c equivalent to speech d break the answer is equivalent to speech okay when parties do not intend to perform the contract they made then it amounts to a fraud b misrepresentation c mistake d none of these when you make a promise and do not intend to perform that becomes fraud it is fraud a sells his dog through auction sale b was the highest bidder b purchases the dog the dog was of unsound mind but a doesn't disclose this fact to b the act of a is a the act is fraudulent b it amounts to sale c it amounts to illegal act d it amounts to fraud rather it does not amount to fraud here a is selling a dog by auction sale and a knows that the dog is of unsound mind however he does not disclose this fact this means a is cheating since he is selling by auction the bidders do not have an option to examine the dog so it becomes the duty of a to disclose this fact and if he is not disclosing he would be cheating or rather i should say he would be committing a fraud so this will become an act which is fraudulent so a is the correct answer next an intentional misrepresentation amounts to a fraud b misrepresentation c undue influence d all of the above intentional misrepresentation there is an intention to deceive so it becomes a fraud this is the answer in order to sustain an action for deceit there must be a proof of now what is an action for deceit action for deceit means deceive means to cheat or fraud so action for deceit means when you do a case in the court when you file a case in the court uh, when you file a case in the court claiming that a fraud has been done against you claiming that you have been cheated so there must be a proof of misrepresentation b undue influence c fraud d coercion so it is clear that there must be fraud in it fraud may be committed by a a party to the contract b an agent of the party to the contract c any person in connivance with a party to contract d any of the above fraud may be committed by any person so the option would be any of the above party himself can commit the fraud or his agent may commit the fraud on his behalf or any other person with his knowledge connivance means knowledge so any other person with his knowledge commits the fraud it is considered as fraud so any person can commit the fraud 